Let's go ahead and pray and we'll start to get into God's word. Father, we praise you. We thank you. We give you glory. You are the King of Kings. You are the Lord of Lords. And we rejoice today. We rejoice with the families that came up here to dedicate their children unto you. May they truly be that Joshua generation that we're going to be studying today, a generation that is bold, a generation that is courageous, a generation that takes land for you. In fact, would we all be that, Lord God? Would you plant it in our heart through the message today that you have a purpose and a plan and a direction for us to take land? in Jesus name. So father, we ask you to remove all distractions from our hearts and our minds, cause us to focus, cause us to be, um, you know, focused on what really you want to speak to each of us, but even more so, would you give us the power to change where we need to change in Jesus name? Amen. Amen. And amen. So let me start off with a little bit of a, you know, it might seem out of context. I promise you, I will bring it back into our scriptures for today. But one of the most frustrating things that a pastor can ever hear is when somebody says, I'm just not being fed. Some of us have said that at different times in our life. Um, can I be honest with you? It's not my job to feed you. Can I be gut level honest with you? See, two-year-olds can start to feed themselves. Come on, Jesus, right? I mean, like, see, infants need to be fed. When we're starting to grow up and we're starting to mature in our faith, we need to feed ourselves. In fact, if you are counting on a Sunday morning experience alone to feed you, every one of you will be anorexic in Jesus' name, right? Every one of us will be anorexic, right? Not only our church, but there are many good churches serving up many healthy offerings of food on the weekends for people to eat. Chances are it's not the church. Okay, I'll use some exceptions. There's some churches out there. Chances are it's not the church. It's something that happens in our own spiritual condition that begins to put us in a place where we're not doing some of the things that maybe we used to be doing to position us for success. And you're going to see that in Joshua's story in just a little while today, right? So there's some things we got to do differently at times in order to position ourselves to be healthy. So our job here on the weekend is to hopefully present you not with Burger King. What's Burger King's model? Have it my way, right? Do, do, do you hear what I'm saying? The scripture is not about have it my way. That's the furthest thing from what scripture is all about. And sometimes for good or bad, uh, I think there's no ill intention in it. They could be exceptionally effective. But Pastor Eric, why don't we do teaching series all the time where we do your best life now. And then we go from our best life now to your finances, God's way. And from your finances, God's way to let's have the best marriage ever, right? And many churches do that effectively. We use those as a tool from time to time to get deep in scripture on a particular topic. It is important. It is vital. But it's it's not have it your way. And what happens is if you do that all the time, you miss out on a bunch of the big things that God wants to say through scripture. See, the most important thing I believe that we need above any teachings about how to have your best marriage, about how to do your finances the best way, about how to do that, we need scripture deep within us. It's scripture that changes us. It's scripture that transforms us. It's scripture that breathes out of us. And let me tell you, if you do something like we're doing this year with the one-year Bible study and a one-year plan, what you can't avoid is the hard subjects. When you do it the other way around, you can pick and choose and get rid of all the stuff that you maybe don't like when you're going verse by verse, chapter by chapter, or in our case, taking 50 of the biggest themes of the Bible and running through them one at a time. Then let me tell you, you're going to be confronted with some stuff that God wants to change in you. And it's important that you do that as well, right? So I want to get back to the heart for just a moment to reiterate why are we doing this one year Bible study and the way that we're doing it? Because for some, when you hear one year Bible study or you even hear the word Bible study, you're like boring, right? But I told you there's some parts of your life that are supposed to be boring, but actually can lead to great joy, that can lead to great intimacy, that can lead to great overflowing happiness in our lives when we put them into practice. We're going to see that. So what we're trying to do here at Journey Church is on a Sunday, serve you up a steak. Come on, Jesus. Not a Big Mac, not a Whopper with cheese, right? Sorry for all you vegetarians in the room. I apologize. You know, tofu just don't cut it for me. You know what I'm saying? You know, so we're trying to serve you up a steak or a meal that would have leftovers. For those of you with kids, what are some of those leftovers? You've got a parent sheet that you got at the beginning of every month that goes along verse by verse, chapter by chapter, scripture by scripture. Go home and talk to your kids about it. 
Enjoy it around the dinner table. Speak to them about it. What did they learn? They're learning the same things that we're doing in a different context, right? Maybe you reheat it a little bit later in the week on Wednesday, right? Because on a Wednesday, maybe you find yourself in a small group. And that small group is actually going deeper into the same subject material that we're talking about. Or if you find yourself online at lunchtime at noon, we're actually doing that little 15 minute online Facebook live Bible study where we're going deeper as well. Uh, we also on Monday mornings list out the scriptures of the week if you're wanting to study it on your own through our Facebook page. So we're giving you a whole bunch of ways that during the week, if you so choose, you can go deeper into scripture and you could get the kind of meal that you really need to get deep within you, that you could be healthy, that you could be spiritually vibrant, that you could be successful in Jesus' name. Can I get one more amen, right? So I hope all that makes sense to you. I really wanted to set the stage in context of that before we dived into Joshua today. So if you have your Bibles, turn with me to Joshua chapter one. And if not, we'll have them on the screen or using the Journey Church app. You could go in there as well. I hope you're ready for some good food because Joshua presents us with just that, right? So a little bit of history leading into Joshua chapter one. Um, in past weeks, we talked about things like Abraham and God's promise to Abraham about this land that the Jewish people would inherit, this land that they would move into. We talked about the Exodus. We talked about Moses. And now we find ourselves at the cusp of entering into the land, of crossing through into Jericho, one of the first cities that they would encounter, of encountering, uh, you know, going across the Jordan River to get to where they need to be to make this all happen. So scripture opens up here in Joshua chapter one with that context in mind, they're about to enter into the land. And it says, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, Moses, my servant is dead. Now, therefore go over this Jordan you and all this people into the land that I am giving them to the people of Israel, every place that is the sole of your foot and where it will tread upon, I have given to you just as I have promised to Moses. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, the great sea towards the going down of the sun shall be your territory, right? So he's reminding them of what he had promised them and he now has them on the cusp of the promise. They're standing there. A few weeks ago in my message, I told you about the land of Israel and we talked about what a miracle it is. They inherited that land in that day and later in AD 70, they were scattered all around the world and no nation has ever been um, scattered completely, has never been so utterly destroyed. No language has ever completely gone away and come back. Yet in our generation, we have borne witness to the rebirth of the land of Israel, of God's very promises from scripture coming true, of a people inhabiting that place who are Jewish, of people who are speaking Hebrew once again. Would we see the miracles of God and tie them to scripture? May it build up our faith. May it excite us. May it give us a vibrancy that God's word is absolutely absolutely true. Can I get an amen for that? Right. Then he says this, which I think is for you and I as well. Joshua one, five, no man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Just as I was with Moses. So it will be with you. I will not leave you or forsake you. Think about that anointing church, that anointing may it rest on you today. May that same kind of a spirit, that spirit of victory, because the Lord is with you, you will be victorious in Jesus' name. God has your back. He will never leave you or forsake you. It actually says, like Moses, or like Joshua, I believe that God has a purpose, a plan, and a mission in mind for you. That's what you're created for. That's the purpose that you're here. You may not be living in it right now. You may not know what it is, but God created you with a purpose in mind. I think this is for somebody here today. I pray that you grasp it. Listen to these words, Isaiah 54, 16. Behold, I have created the blacksmith who blows on the coals in the fire, who brings forth an instrument for his work. And I've created the spoiler to destroy. There's good and bad. There's challenges in life. There's gonna be opposition to them entering in the land, but God will make them victorious as he will do for you. No weapon formed against you shall prosper and every tongue which rises against you in judgment, you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and their righteousness is from me. 
Be strong and courageous. The Lord has your back. He created you with a purpose. You're here in Jacksonville for a reason. Whether you like it or not right now, God calls you to this place. Do you realize he has a plan for your life? He has amazing things that he wants to see you do. He's equipped you for it. Would you go and walk in that? If you don't know what yours is, I can guarantee you it starts in the verses I'm about to read. Matthew 28, 18. And Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always, even till the end of the age. Doesn't it sound a little bit like what we just read? See, your purpose is tied to sharing the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's what you're called to do. But Eric, I'm scared. We'll deal with that in just a moment. But I'm here to tell you that this life is but a breath is what scripture says. There's people in our own congregation who have lost loved ones this very week. When we look at the cruelty and pain of this world and we look at the stuff that we think shouldn't be happening, you know, God has a bigger purpose and a bigger plan that we may never understand that's in his divine sovereignty. But moments of pain that we experience here, even if we're so blessed to live 80 or 90 years, it's but a second in eternity. It's a second. All the things that we worry about, all the things that we squabble over, all the things that we fight about really are pretty meaningless in the big scheme of things. He's saying, focus on him, focus on his kingdom, focus on your relationship with Jesus Christ. And guess what? Everything else has a way of falling back into place. It really does. But we need to be about the mission of the kingdom. And to tell you how impactful that is, we did a survey this past week. How did people come to know uh, Journey Church? How do they begin to get plugged in? They have a picture I'd love to show you. This stack represents the visitors that came to Journey because of a personal invitation. The other stacks represent mailers, ads, and other outreaches. You make a difference. You make a difference. Think about the power in that if they leave it up there for a moment. I could go spend thousands of dollars on Facebook ads. I could go spend thousands of dollars on mailers. I could go out there and do all these things. And I think we should keep doing those things because as you can see, there's some impact of them. If you look on the right, God uses some of those things that draw people here and draw them into a relationship with him. But there is nothing better than God's good old fashioned great commission plan of one person sharing their faith with another person to see people come to know Jesus. Keep it up, church. But Eric, I'm scared. Be strong and courageous is what we're going to read. God has your back. Hallelujah. God is good. So how do we overcome this fear? Joshua was scared too. He has to tell him in what we're about to read probably 20 times, be strong and courageous. Be strong and very courageous. He has to tell him time and time again as an encouragement to press forward. But also in the middle, he gives him an antidote for where our courage really comes from. I think it's a thing that's sadly lacking in our own society. It's something that we don't put into practice enough. But here he's reminding us through scripture of what really needs to be done. Joshua 1 chapter 6. Be strong and courageous, for you shall cause this people to inherit the land I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous. Be careful to do it according to the law of Moses, my servant, and how he commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right or the left, that you may have success wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful according to all that is written in it, for you shall make your way prosperous, and, when, and then you will have good success." Have I not commanded you be strong and courageous? Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed for the Lord our God is with you wherever you go. He keeps repeating that. He keeps repeating, be strong and courageous. But in the middle of there, he gave us some very important advice along the way of where our courage and strength actually comes from. I'll use a natural analogy first, picking on myself for a season, and then we'll take it back to a spiritual one. So for much of my life over the past 15 years, I chose to eat whatever I wanted to eat whenever I wanted to eat it. 
And if that meant that bluebell cookies and cream ice cream was in the freezer, I would eat it every night until it's gone. Come on, Jesus, right? <laughs> there were many moments where I neglected my own health at the midst of it. I didn't work out. I didn't do the things that I needed to do. And then guess what? When I moved here, I weighed 190 pounds. Mary Jo and I were talking about that this morning. And, uh, you know, I was a fit person when I got here. My life was quite different at that particular time. And I let myself go. I got lazy. I didn't focus on the things that I needed to. And then what happens is we rarely change until the pain of changing is less than the pain of staying the same. Or I said that completely wrong. But what I mean by that is until the pain gets so great, we rarely change. Until we get that phone call, until we get whatever that is. So there came a day where I looked at the scale and it said 242 pounds. That means I gained 52 pounds since I moved here in the year 2000. So in the past 18 years, I had gained 52 pounds. But you think that was enough of a wake up call for me? Some of y'all shaking your nose. You, you know I'm hard headed, don't you? I mean, she's like, yeah, no, that wasn't it. No, that wasn't it, no, no problem. And I was reluctant to share this because I'm not too far into the journey to be honest with you, but no, it wasn't. Sadly, it wasn't. It took a visit to the doctor where I went in there to innocuously get some stuff treated for an allergy. And I walk into the door and he says, you're going straight to the hospital. And I'm like, what? <laughs> you're not even driving or taking your car. So I had the embarrassment of calling a good friend and saying, would you come pick me up? And would you take me to the hospital? Right? Luckily they were right around the corner at the time that happened. Right? So I ended up having to go to the hospital and my blood pressure was 190 over something. I don't even remember what it was, but it was very bad. Right? So um, the doctor goes and they'd run all the tests and thank God, like, it looks like my heart is absolutely perfect. I've got high blood pressure and he gives me a very boring prescription. <laughs> Guess what he told me? So I heard somebody say it, say it louder, eat right, lose weight and exercise. Doesn't it kind of, Oh, you want to go to another Bible study? Read your word, meditate daily. What did he just tell him? I mean, it sounds boring on the surface, does it not? But you know, there's great power in some of the stuff that sounds boring, right? So it hasn't taken me that long and please pray that I can continue on it in the spirit of what we've talked about being whole in spirit, soul and body this year. God gave me a wake up call even in the midst of that, but it did not take long where after only a few months of attempting to eat right, and it's not always pleasant, I'll be honest with you. There's moments where I'm like, Krispy Kreme, come on. Dude. So Leroy, I'm getting out of the car and he's offering me like a Krispy Kreme. I'm like, you are the devil, bro. I mean, what are you doing? That's wrong, wrong, you know? But after a very short time of eating right, of starting to exercise and starting to get back into it, I've lost 20 pounds and it didn't take very long at all. And I don't say that for me, right? I say that to make a point, not to get applause for me. I, I say, it doesn't take much change. And then you start to see progress. And you're like, whoa, what was once boring, where I hated to go out there and go out into the garage. See, you can have a treadmill in your garage, but it don't mean you're gonna use it, right? <laughs> It'd be picking up dust, right? If we start to bring it back to spiritual things, most of us have more Bibles in our house than we can imagine. And we don't pick them up though, do we? So we wonder why we're not fed. We wonder why we're not thriving. And yes, in the beginning, maybe those first couple times, it's gonna feel like discipline to go take 15 minutes out of your day and go sit down and read the word or wake up a little earlier. But here's what starts to happen. All of a sudden you start to see progress. And like, yeah, man, come on too, hallelujah, right? See, I got on the treadmill the other day and I actually ran 35 minutes without stopping. It was like, wow, you know, progress, right? In the same way, think about it. You start to work these spiritual muscles and you're going to be like, yeah, yeah. You're going to be like, God spoke to me. Hallelujah. Ooh, you know, you're going to see him moving all around the corner. And that's what he's telling Joshua. If you want to be strong, if you want to be courageous, if you want to take land, then you got to do some of the boring stuff to get to that next place. And in the midst of that boring also comes some incredible life moments along the way. If I go back to my first statement, which sounded a little harsh when we started off the service, you know, I'm not here to be your cheerleader. I'm here to be your trainer. Come on, Jesus. And if you ever had one of them, you have love, hate relationships. I'm here to tell you what you don't want to hear, right? I'm here to challenge you. I'm here to encourage you. I'm here to call you out when we need to be called out, right? 
cheerleader just cheers you on. Sometimes you could be going in the complete wrong direction and they'll keep cheering you on. I'm not here to do that. I'm here that we'd be whole in spirit, soul, and body. Can I get an amen? God is good. God is good. So that is the prescription. That's where the change begins to happen. And you might be like, Eric, I hear you, but all this action stuff, mission, purpose, it sounds completely exhausting. A body in motion stays in motion. I'm giving you some more very simple things here, right? We know these things. You got to get up off the couch. You got to open up that word. You got to dive in. You got to get out of your comfort zone and go to that small group. You got to get up and get early. You got to start serving. You got to plug in. These are the things that begin to make a real spiritual difference and compel you to have the energy to go out there and continue to make a difference, right? See, when you don't work those spiritual muscles, you get very lethargic very quick. When you do, God has a way of filling you with rest, filling you with energy, positioning you to continue to move on in him. As I'll say in Joshua 1.13, remember the word that Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you saying, the Lord your God is providing for you a place of rest and will give you this land. Your wives, your little ones, and your livestock shall remain in the land that Moses gave you beyond the Jordan, but all the men of valor shall, among you shall pass over armed before your brothers and shall help them. Until the Lord gives rest to your brothers he has to you, then take possession of the land that the Lord your God has given to them. Then you shall return to the land of your possession and you shall possess it, the land that Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave them beyond the Jordan towards the sunrise our hope is to see the city of Jacksonville transformed by the power of the gospel for the glory of God in our generation, right? That's an action step. That last part is just what he's saying. He's saying Christianity is a team sport. We need to continue to advance the gospel till there's a moment where God comes and brings that universal rest to all of us, right? So there's people outside of the walls of Journey Church who desperately need Jesus, God's calling us to live as people of action, the people on mission, a people who go on out there beyond ourselves to reach them with the good news of the gospel, to continue to see that stack increase, to continue to see people come to know Jesus, to continue to see the kingdom of God and the land grow in Jesus name. I'm getting fired up. I'm gonna start preaching like T.D. Jakes. Come on, Nick. Um, you know, that ain't gonna happen. I told you I'm pretty boring. Um, so, but think about that. He's saying, don't give up until the mission is fulfilled. We know it's not done yet. We live in this last generation. We've seen Israel's rebirth. We see the signs of the times all around us. He's saying, keep pressing on, keep moving forward. In the midst of that, he will give us rest. He will give us energy. Keep working those spiritual muscles, church. Would you rise with me and bow your heads and close your eyes today? God is so good. Lord, I sent you just saying the team needs you. Keep pressing on until we enter and possess our land. Fight with our brothers and sisters. Help them take their land. One day you will call us home to rest. And Lord, we long for that day. We long to be with you in paradise in eternity. Until then, may we love one another, care for one another, be there for one another, fight for one another. Would we continue to reach out and help those who are oppressed, help those who are poor, and needy and broken in spirit, those who are addicted, those who are faced with all kinds of challenges, Lord God, would we be there and be the people of God that you called us to be, would be a light amongst the nations. Would we believe your word when it says that we are a masterpiece created to do good works? Would we marvel in it? Would we relish in it? Would we get excited by it? Would we put in the work day to day of spending time with you? Would we heed the words of Joshua chapter one, or you said, meditate daily on you. Would we spend time with you and in your presence? Would we spend time in prayer? Would we spend time with you in the word? Would we study the word? Would we know the word? Would we sing about you? Would we tell our kids about you? Father, would we make you the focus of our life? And I have no doubt that if we do so, even for a short time, we will begin to see the rewards that will compel us to live that out as a lifestyle all the days of our life. So, Father, we ask you to move this very morning. Move on the hearts of those who might be here who don't have a relationship with you. Draw them, maybe for that very first time, into saying, Jesus, you are the son of the living God who died on a cross and rose again, and I receive life from you. Father, would you do that? Would you move on their hearts right now? For yet others of us who 
have maybe been a bit more lethargic than we want to admit, who have maybe drifted off into a different direction, who have somehow lost our spiritual vitality, who know that today is a day of getting on the scale and seeing 242, but a day that they don't wait until that emergency happens, a day that they don't find themselves in Orange Park Hospital, Lord God, but they would avert it and begin to make the change this very day by recommitting their heart and their lives to you and saying, God, we need you. God, we want to move forward in you. Father, we commit ourselves to getting healthy in spirit, soul, and body in advance of the crisis, Lord. We don't want to be a crisis-compelled people. We want to be a spirit-led, empowered, Holy Spirit, walking, tongue, talking group of people in Jesus' name. If that's you, and you know today's a day where you either need to dedicate or rededicate your life to God, I don't want to embarrass you, but I would ask you to be bold and courageous bold enough to raise your hand so that I could see it, so that I know who I'm praying with. Is that you? I see your hand already. Amen. And your hand in the back and your hand up here at front. Thank you, Lord. There's still yet maybe others. If I haven't seen you and acknowledged it yet, raise it up real high so I can see it. I see your hand, sir. And your hand, ma'am, over there. And your hand over here on the right. Journey, get a little bit excited. God's moving today. God's moving today. Again, I assure you, I do this not to um, embarrass you in any way. In fact, everyone around you is going to be super excited and fired up, but I would like to pray with you and for you. I won't embarrass you, but I'd just like to shake your hand and pray with you. If you raised your hand, would you do me a favor? Come right up here to the front. I'd love to pray for you, man. Come on up. Come on up right here, right now. God bless you. So glad you're here, man. Great meeting you earlier. Great seeing you up here now. Come on, brother. God bless you. Glad you're here, man. Stay right here. We'll pray for you, ma'am. God bless you, sister. So good to see you. Stay right there. Mama, good to see you. Good to see you, ma'am. God bless you. Good to see you. And also you. So glad you're here. Wow. Journey, give him one big round of applause. So I'm going to pray for you. And afterwards, there's a couple of people around you that'd like to give you some next steps to start you on your walk of faith. I pray they'll, I know they'll only take 30 seconds of your time, but we want to equip you and give you a gift to help you get your journey of faith started. So father, we come before you and praise you. We lay hands on these who have come up to the front as they dedicate or rededicate their lives to you. We ask you to fill them with the power of the Holy spirit as they empty themselves. Lord God, would you pour out your power into them, your might, your anointing as we together declare in faith that Jesus, you are the one and only begotten son of God who died a sinner's death on the cross. Your blood was shed that we might have life and have remission of sins. And father, we receive that right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you that you are a brother who loved us enough to come and die that we might have life. And from this moment forward, Lord, we make a declaration, not just those who are here at the front, but all of us who are here today saying, Jesus, we will serve you from this moment forward. Yes, we've stepped on the scale and there's areas that we see ourselves wanting. And Lord, we ask you to energize us and motivate us and empower us and give us the power to just live out this life the way that you've called us to do a life where we would have purpose and mission and energy and vigor. And you would use us to see many people come to know you, that we truly would be a part of that Joshua generation that would usher your soon return in Jesus name. And everybody says... Amen. Give them one more big round of applause before they go back to their seats. Hey, as you go, remember there's some kids back there who need you go and live on mission. God bless you guys. If you're new to Journey Church, coming up and say hello. It would be great to meet you.